Terima kasih dan uh, selamat tengah hari ya, rakan-rakan media kerana hadir dalam sidang akhbar pada tengah hari ini. Bersama saya adalah YD Lim Mok Sing, Exco Kerajaan Negeri. Di kanan saya adalah Engineer Adnan Razali, pengarah kecerutraan. Engineer Chia Ching Kui, Senior Engineer dan Tuan Haji Roslan pemangku pengarah pembangunan MBTP kita mulakan uh, dengan menyentuh tentang isu pelebaran jalan bagi permohonan kebentaran merancang bagi sekolah jenis kebangsaan mendengar, jenis kebangsaan perempuan Cina Pulau Pinang. Saya ingin nak tegaskan bahawa banyak laporan sudah dibuat tetapi kita perlu uh, jelaskan dua perkara. Pertamanya adalah berhubung dengan garisan simpanan jalan di bawah draft pelan akan susun atau susun jalan yang keduanya adalah Penang Transport Master Plan Kita harus membezakan dua perkara ini Walaupun dalam kes-kes tertentu ada hubung kait Tetapi untuk fahaman kita, kita perlu lihat satu demi satu dan Menggunakan kemampuan dan kebijaksanaan untuk mengaitkan dua perkara kalau perlu Kita mulakan dengan Garisan simpanan simpanan jalan right of way. Apakah sebenarnya sejarah mengapa di MBTT ada plan tata susunan jalan? Apakah tujuannya sebenar dan mengapa ianya penting? Ianya penting untuk tujuan pelebaran jalan, cadangan jalan baru. Seperti pembinaan lebur raya, jalan atri dan jalan sekunder, secondary road Atau untuk pembinaan simpang jalan Atau persimpangan yang berlampu isyarat Ataupun persimpangan bertingkat Atau akses laluan masuk ke plot tanah Satu perkara yang kita perlu faham adalah Bandaraya Georgetown adalah sebuah bandaraya yang berkembang secara organik. Ia ni bukan satu bandaraya yang dirancang dan mula pembinaan seperti Putrajaya. Georgetown adalah sebuah pusat bandar yang berkembang sejak 786 abad 19 abad 20 dan abad 21 mula dari pusat bandar dan keluar ke suburban dan pada hari ini sehingga bayang baru bayang lepas ianya kembang dengan organik memang tak ada master planning pada masa itu ia berkembang begitu dan pada tempoh awalan pun Jalan raya di pusat bandar dibina untuk kereta kuda Bukan untuk kereta atau lori atau van yang kita lihat pada hari ini Jadi tujuan uh, ROW di bawah draft uh, tata susun jalan ini adalah untuk menggariskan di mananya perlu Uh, pelebaran jalan uh, atas jalan sedia ada sebab bandar kita semakin berkembang keluar uh, kita perlu ada jajaran untuk kawasan-kawasan uh, yang masih belum buka uh, apabila dibuka dia ikut susunan ini yang ditetapkan mana-mana tuan tanah apabila nak majukan tanah mereka mereka lihat kepada draft ini atas susun dan Arkitek mereka atau planner mereka akan mengaturkan projek mereka ikut fakta susunan jalan ini. Itu untuk kawasan yang baru. Untuk kawasan yang sedia ada, 
kebanyakan tujuan untuk lebar jalan lah. Dari apa yang sedia ada mungkin 30 kaki kepada 66 kaki Atau kalau jalan utama mungkin 100 kaki Tujuan itu untuk fokus lah, keperluan pada masa-masa depan Sekiranya tak ada graf ini Maka tuan tanah akan bina sehingga garisan yang, yang dibenarkan lah dan kalau pada masa hadapan perlu maka tanah-tanah tersebut perlu di acquire untuk pelebaran so there is a need to lay out uh, road layout plan uh, for the whole city and for the whole island uh, possible. so that was already done way back in the 1960s this uh, atas susunan jalan memang wujud uh, sejak tahun 80-an Engineer yang paling tua dari segi usia adalah Ang Ing Tai. Dia berkhidmat sejak 74 atau 75. Bila dia sampai, this uh, layout plan is already in place. So it's something very old. Tetapi uh, 1.4 uh, pada 80-an, uh, seperti saya kata, bandar kita berkembang secara, secara organik. Jadi MPPP pada 80-an sesuai dengan pertumbuhan ekonomi dan pembangunan hartanah yang pesat maka ada beberapa jalan utama seperti Masjid Negeri Scotland Road Aitam, Gothic Road, Bagan Jema Bermerut, Kelawai telah di-updated uh, atas susun itu untuk sesuai dengan perkembangan. Jadi apa yang kita lihat pada 80-an pun ada updating of the uh, uh, road layout plan. Uh, 1.5 uh, makluman garisan simpanan jalan boleh diperolehi ya, di jabatan perjuruteraan ya, seperti saya katakan tadi mana-mana tuan tanah nak majukan tanah baru ataupun kawasan sedia ada first thing dia consultant will do go to MPPP Engineering Department look at the uh, road layout plan so that they know where the roads will be for the new area for the existing area what type of new requirements will be imposed if they submit plan so as I say it could be a 100 feet reserve it could be a 74 it could be a 66 it could be a 50 feet it could be a 40 feet reserve depending on the locality it is based on uh, cost, uh, jumlah traffic, kepadatan pembangunan dan jenis kegunaan tanah. All this will influence uh, the corridor or the uh, track of way to be decided. Jadi kalau 1.6 pembangunan yang terlibat dengan garis simpanan jalan maka perlu dianjakkan sebab garis itu sudah ditetapkan. Apabila ini summit plan Kamsa akan arrive kawasan ini memulakan pelebaran beberapa kaki dan pemaju akan patuh dengan syarat semula. Penjarahan tanah selepas itu kalau klien sudah lulus, you pun sudah patuh dengan syarat-syarat itu tanah itu akan diserahkan kepada pihak kerajaan negeri di peringkat OC lah, compliance Um, tetapi ada kalanya walaupun tanah-tanah uh, diserah tuan tanah masih boleh pohon kepada uh, majlis atau kerajaan negeri bolehkah saya terus menggunakan tanah itu sehingga ada projek pelebaran jalan itu pun dibenarkan uh, sehingga ianya diperlukan uh, dia boleh guna uh, kawasan yang sepatutnya diserahkan itu dan sememangnya pun diserahkan tetapi dia pohon balik untuk guna tanah itu sehingga projek lebar jarak tuan pada masa-masa depan jadi kita lihat eh, sebab ini bukan perkara yang baru perkara yang wujud sejak 60-an, 80-an kita dengan masa yang sedikit 1-2 eh, hari 
kita lihat kepada fa-fa yang, baru, uh, yang lama Pilih beberapa contoh untuk kita lihat Bagaimana ianya diletakkan sebagai syarat ya, Kepada kemajuan ya, dan perlu ya, menjerahkan tanah-tanah ini Untuk tujuan uh, jalan ya, selari dengan uh, plan tata susunan uh, jalan MBPP Satu, sekolah menengah jenis kebangsaan Hengi saya jemput rakan-rakan media lihat uh, skrin uh, Ini adalah uh, asalnya uh, tapak uh, Hengi School Asalnya uh, Hengi School pada masa dahulu uh, Sebelum itu, sebelum itu Perhenti di sini dari Green Lane eh. Kalau sekarang main sampai ke Tong Tok Las Pada dulu Jalan Hamilton sampai ke Sembadan Sekolah Yang merah itu Lot Hengi School Hengi School besar lah pada masa itu Ini Round Obak Ini Free School Ini Kelenggan Road Tetapi pada tahun Tak disebutkan sini Ada Lihat ya, saja Yeah. Tarik kita kita akan cari is in the 70s or 80s 60 something lah 60 something We'll find the date kita Ada pembangunan Ataupun ada tujuan untuk Menyambung jalan Hamilton ke Rock Hopal Jadi pada masa itu adalah Serahan atau acquisition Saya minta uh, MPP jelaskan lah kalau ada projek memang serahan Dia serah untuk Kadang-kadang bukan serah saja Tetapi bina jalan itu juga Next Jadi syarat ini Diletakkan Dan pada hari ini Tuan-tuan puan-puan Menggunakan jalan Hamilton Terus ke round about itu Atau dari round about Kalau nak pergi Hamilton yang sebelah Green Lane sekarang ada jalan, ada sambungan Dulu tak ada Dulu mungkin dia perlu pergi Green Lane Atau pergi ke Perak Road Satu round Atau gunakan jalan-jalan kampung lah kalau ada Jadi apa yang kita lihat Adalah hasil daripada Sama ada serahan Ataupun pengambil alihkan Itu uh, kejurutera akan terangkan tadi Memang berlaku sejak tahun 8 Anak puluhan lagi Dan baru-baru ini pun Dalam 4-5 tahun pun ada projek uh, Yang baru lah, bangunan yang baru Apa yang diserahkan pada masa itu 64 kaki This road 64 kaki Dan dalam plan kebenaran baru-baru ini 10 kaki ditambah tetapi mungkin di tapak masih tidak buat lah tapi dia buat serahan dia buat serahan dan mungkin dia pohon guna sampai perlu buat lah guna sampai perlu buat jadi guru besar hengi di petik dalam akbar kata dia tak sedar mungkin kalau dia tak sedar tak apa lah tapi memangnya sedap dahulu 64 feet was taken from the school land And the reason approval another 10 feet to make this 74 feet consistent with the rest of Hamilton Road. So now you see actually the basketball basketball court over the other side, not over the other side. So people thought, it, how come the basketball court is over this side and the school is over this side? So this is the result of the new road that was made way back in the 60s. I think the date. 63, eh? 63, eh? way back in 1963. Built 1963. Yes. Okay, let us look at the uh, second case. This is Wawasan Open University. Wawasan Open University. Similar condition was also imposed when uh, the Wawasan University was built uh, behind the Colonial building, the eh? Chow building. Similar condition, 
and we look at the next one. How many feet was imposed? 40 feet of service work was imposed on, on this uh, Wabasan Open University project. We all know this is a Gerakan sponsored project. Even Gerakan also comply. Huh? They have to, lah, whatever party, it doesn't matter. They, have, they comply with it. So 40 feet was taken away from their land so that this, this uh, layout plan uh, can be complied with. If you look down from this lot, uh, the, of course down the Sun State is not developed yet. If it's developed definitely, the condition will be imposed uh, to continue down. If you look at uh, the next plot is Mayfair. Uh, Mayfair, is look for yourself. Uh, any land surrender or not for the service road? Same thing. Next lot, SPRM, MACC. Wow, Chukuk Kwan, no, MACC. But they have to comply as well. It is imposed on MACC, and you, today you see, on city bank, it is linked right up to, in future, of course, when it is needed, all this has to be made, uh, has to be built. When it's not built, they can still apply to use it until such day that uh, service road connection will be built. After MACC, is the famous city bank. Eh? In front, there is a service road. Next, come to the sensitive running mate project. Eh? I'm sure it will be imposed also. Eh? Right next is the KWSP building. Is there a service road? The building also set up, set in front, set to the back. All this were imposed in the past. Of course, the next one is the Bunsiu bungalow. If they do not submit a plan, no condition will be imposed. But if in future there is a desperate need, the council can still acquire. No? Can still acquire. The option to acquire is still there to complete the whole service road. Not only in Sultan Amasha, in anywhere in the city, the same principle applies. Next, Chongling uh, Private School. No? On the left, that was what Scotland Road was in the past. Huh? Only, only this side. The other side, no road, no. Only this side. But in the 80 something, including this taman, huh? they have their internal road, no. Huh? The, the bungalow houses behind Union School, Union Secondary Girls School. <coughs> And their lot runs up to the current road la, huh? near near the medium there. La, huh? Near the medium. That is all Union School land. But because of the road widening. Next. Today what you see is the wall of uh, Union School here. And the building is just about five, six feet away from the boundary. All this land well, I believe acquire la, because for the road widening. Not, not necessarily surrender la, as I said. If you are involved in a project, then surrender, or surrender and build, and then surrender to the government. The government has another option. If it's needed, they can acquire to build, uh, to do the road widening. You see today, you can travel along Scotland Road. If it's not done, you only travel two way uh, on this side. Now, three lane on this side, that side also three lane. Uh. Of course, even this service road is taken away. Uh, the, now the road comes from uh, Masyaka Penyayang. Even probably Masyaka Penyayang is a state land also. You have to set in for that new road to be built right up to the junction. So Union School also affected how many feet? Easily 50, 60 feet. Uh, three lanes. Three lanes. Union School also affected. Not something new that happens today. Next. This is uh, a Chongning Private, Chongning Private, this is the main road. Chongning Secondary is here, Chongning Private is here. I want to clarify something. There have been some confusion or they are involved in the transport master plan. No, they are only involved in the Tata Susuna Jalan. If they submit plan to develop or to pick, pick new building. They are not, at this moment, we are not even talking about the monorail in future, yes lah. Uh, at the moment, nothing, they are not involved. They are involved with the draft Susunan Jalan. 
because in actual fact, private, uh, Chongling private, in 20 years ago, uh, they had some building, uh, no, you this, they had some project, and 20 years ago, they were required already to surrender. Surrender, but they still use it. They still use it. Today, you go there, there is a pedestrian bridge. There is a, a bus stop uh, right in front. That is also as a result of Chongling private surrendering the land way back 20 over years ago, but recently they also submitted an, another plan and the council took the opportunity because last time they didn't do the document, uh, uh, the grant. Now they required, okay, this you already surrendered 20 years ago, but it's still considered your land because the grant has not changed. So as a result of the latest development, we ask them to do it to reflect that actually the land is up to here and not up to the other side already done. When the chairman of the board of governor Chung Ling commented, he, he is a developer, he is well aware, and he doesn't want to comment further because he has not submitted any plan. If Chung Ling's secondary summit, probably this 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 bit will also be posted in front of them. It's because of the draft Tata Susunan Jalan, nothing to do with the transfer master plan. It happens to Chongling private, it may also happen to Chongling when they submit the plan. Next. Where is this? Common Green Lane. Okay, Common Green Lane. In the past, the lot, of course, uh, this part of Green Lane is much narrower. Lah, huh? the, the, the city grow and grow and grow. A road last time for Bullock Cart, now it's for BMW huh? and, for, and for lorry. So, when the second, when the first bridge was completed, later the underpass in Udini was built. Together with the flyover Hamilton to Lorong Patulancha, you know, the S flyover. When that was built, you know that uh, Common Green Lane is just beside the, the flyover. So, what was imposed on them, or acquired from them? This was required to be surrendered or acquired, I think that we have to determine. Uh, it's probably acquired, it's acquired. Uh, this, what you see today is a wider green lane into three lanes right up to the fence of the, of the school. But maybe document-wise it's not uh, done, done, done yet. Lah. So recently, last year, they also have one block of school building and we found out that although the council also imposed, uh, even Convent Green Lane, council imposed, but it was found that actually they have already uh, surrendered way back uh, in the 80s when uh, the firewall was built. So this time they were allowed to proceed with the building without additional land uh, to be surrendered. Uh. Next. This is uh, Jelutong, we take a case of a Chinese Kong Si, uh, Kang Ha Kong, uh, Ui Kong Si, in Jelutong. Uh. Uh, this is the Sungai Pinang traffic light, Jalan Jelutong, uh, Lobo Pakal. There is a Chinese association called the Kang Ha Tong, Ui Kong Si. Uh. Uh, next door, there is already a shop house development. Uh. When, when you develop uh, these shop houses, they already set back. So the same principle applies all along the Lutong Road. Whenever there is new application, the Tata Susunan Jalan come in play. So you follow what is being uh, designated. So some already developed, set in, some not yet developed. It's left like that. Lah. All down to the next junction. So when there was a building project, similar condition was imposed on Kang Ha Tong. So what you see today, they have already surrendered this part. This is the Jolokan Ming Road. This is the next shop houses that still the old houses. This is the new houses that have already been set in. This is for future. If the if there is a connection right up to Sungai Pinang, this land will be used. But today, they are still allowed to use as their parking area. Huh? Who, are, who are from the Kang huh? So you know. Uh, it's just part of a uh, compliance of a requirement. Uh. But since there is no road widening required at the moment, 
they can use it uh, for their parking or whatever, free of charge, I think. Uh, because uh, it's not required at the moment. Maybe document-wise, you do it properly. On paper, it belongs to the state government for future use. But in actual fact, they are using it. They can apply, even though when they comply, surrender, done. Same time you apply, I want to use it, can I use it until it is needed for future uh, road expansion. And government usually, government usually approve. Any other cases? We have about six, seven cases, but there are many cases, many cases. You just see uh, Him Hyang set in, the church set in. The next church also set in, but the difference is, oh, since there is no road widening, can we use it? The council say, okay, the, the, the one uh, bordering Jalan Chao Tai, there are two church, of course, seven Adventists, nothing yet, like, maybe they did not submit. If they submit, also in line with Him Hyang, the Methodist Church and the next church, I don't know the name. That church also uh, surrendered, on paper surrendered, but they apply to use back that land until uh, the service road is connected. They are allowed to put small structures on this road. Actually, no structure allowed out there. They, they still keep their fence. Uh, no? When it's required, everything has to be removed. So that is uh, the history of uh, what we are looking at, why we need to surrender land for the purpose of uh, not necessarily surrender as I say it could be acquisition uh, in some cases it's acquisition because the government will do it the government don't want to wait uh, this developer surrender a little bit that not, not connected uh, another developer uh, surrender a little bit the government can choose to do the project on their own and they acquire so that they can build it the government can build it that is a different uh, because money is hard to come by. If they, you can impose a condition, uh, they surrender next time if the council built, they don't need to acquire, uh, save the uh, payers' money. We don't have to acquire the land because it's already surrendered. That's the purpose. Uh. The two options for the for the council, if they want to implement the draft, the draft is not only for the landowners to make reference to, yes, but on the part of the council or JKR, if the needs is so pressing, they can go and acquire all the land and build whatever is designated in the draft. Okay. They surrender because of the development or an acquisition because the council wants to do it. The fact that someone lands were taken and some people have made the sacrifice in the past so that today we can use all the words that I have mentioned just now. It is because of their sacrifice, setting, setting back their building for the development or receiving a compensation from the state for the roads to be built as we enjoy it today. There are many cases, maybe we don't have the time to dig into every case, but these six cases are sufficient to let us understand uh, the workings of uh, how to implement the proposal under the uh, draft road layout plan. Come back to the case of uh, the Penang Chinese Girls High School. Three point two tell us that the school submitted an application on the 9th of uh, July 2013 for the upper purpose in 3.1. Uh, they want to uh, build the nine story school block hmm, comprising one, two, three, all the details are there. An assembly area in level one, science and biological lab in level two, human skill in, on level 3 and 4, language lab on level 5, on level 6, uh, arts, history and geography uh, lab, on the 7th floor, they propose the uh, chemistry and physics lab. On the 8th floor, they propose a music uh, <coughs> lab or room before it, and at the top, it is for curriculum, uh, uh, core 
curriculum activities, and in fact, they want to build a, a basketball court you know, with a roof, you know, tower park basketball court. So that is uh, submitted by the Pemegang Amana SMJK Perumpuan China Pulau Pinang. And the council approved their plan on the 3rd of December 2013. Just a few months later, the plan was approved, of course, with the condition uh, with the condition that uh, the school is required 3.3 uh, according in accordance with the, the layout uh, plan, uh, the council imposed on the school to surrender for road reserve 30 ranging from 30 to 33 feet, uh, as you can see. That condition was imposed on the school. It's not something new, as I say, it dates back to the 60s, 80s. It is not something new. In fact, among the board of governors are architects, and the submitting architect is actually a member of the board. They are very well aware of this requirement. Uh, since approving in 2013, uh, we found that uh, in 3.4, one year later, one year later, it was approved 3rd of uh, December 2013. One year later, it was found that the plan has lapsed. Huh? Now you may want to know why, and we refresh on our memory, link it with the running mate case, the same section 24.1. Huh? 24.1 say, if the work had not commenced, you need to renew your planning permission because the planning permission is valid for 12 months. You can renew it if you have not start, started any work. And later the RSN came in, okay, you can renew five times only. In this case, the school, the applicants did not apply for renewal and the plan is Consider lapse. Huh? The plan is considered lapse. Therefore, very important, 3.4, the rumusan that I want to say, keperluan untuk menjerakan tanah sekolah seperti condition 3.3 tidak timbul ketika ini. Because the plan has already lapsed. They cannot build the school uh, building. Because the plan has already lapsed. So the issue of having to comply Surrendering 30 to 33 feet at this juncture, I must say, it does not arise anymore. It does not arise anymore. 4.0. Now we go, we leave this uh, aside and go to the Penang Transport Master Plan. I hope this has already clarified the position of the Penang Chinese Girls School. It is not related to the Penang Transport Master Plan because their plan was approved in. 2013. SRS was only appointed 2014. Uh, 2015. Sorry. 2015. How could something that happens two years later determine some two years before? So it is not related, but rather related to the Tata Susunan Jalan, along Jalan Koti and Jalan Bagan Jerman. And elsewhere, I think we can show you all the uh, Tata Susun. Afterwards, we can show you the example. So it's not related uh, to the uh, transport master plan. But however, as the SRS consortium has also chosen this corridor, uh, Jalan Kotip, that is concerned whether the oh, transport master plan also can uh, I want to say today, 4.0, the SRS consortium have given me the latest update yesterday and this is the update that the Penang Island link alignment eh, Dajaran is the alignment and Island links alignment along Jalan Kotip has been determined eh, has been determined by them and tidak akan melibatkan tanah-tanah sekolah that is the, the final design of the SRS consortium, 
after having done the topographic survey and the design, they do not need the school land, subjected of course when this is presented to the state and the MPPP, subjected to the not of the uh, MPPP and state government. But for SRS, they have worked out this alignment which does not necessitate the school land. Not only Pinghua, but also the Indian Association and Pote High School, I must say, right here today, to allay any concern. Not only Pinghua, the Penang Chinese Girls School, is not required in the alignment, but down the road, the Indian Association and the Pote High School. I think that's all that I want to uh, share uh, today. Now open for question. If there's any Saint Nicholas school, or not? yeah. Saint Nicholas, school. Saint Nicholas. I was informed they will do their level best to also avoid Saint Nicholas home. In any road project, as we said earlier, they will be found to be uh, structure land definitely. Sometimes land without structure. Sometimes land with structure will be. Factor. And all this is being fine-tuned by the consortium. This will be announced when we do the display. You know? When we do the display, the final alignment has to be displayed. Followed by, in this case, there must be acquisition uh, because it's not under under a project that you need to surrender. All this will be under acquisition because it is a project the government wants to implement. <coughs> not not something related to the uh, condition of the uh, road layout panels. Okay, any more questions? As far as our record show, they, they do not. So that's why we only anggap yang yang sudah berubuk. Confirm lah. Sudah confirm lah. No, no, no renewal lah. Of oh, that would be a new things to be considered. Like but, what, but what is your stand? I mean, you know the situation. So. We will leave it to the school to decide how they want to submit. We cannot comment now because they also understand the situation. We will look at their submission. But if they know your stand, they probably will take you know, some measures. Uh, we cannot speak on behalf of the uh, board member. After this announcement, maybe they can uh, consider what is the next step they, they want to take. Uh, I have met with the submitting architect and he agrees to uh, arrange a meeting. Actually, actually, we decided not to speak until we meet now, no? so that we can discuss. But since uh, so many uh, people are concerned, uh, a campaign has been launched. Even on the part of the board of governor, they, 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 they felt the need to speak la, no? to not to keep silence over the whole effect. And on our part, since we have uh, obtained the necessary uh, information, I think it is also proper not to drag the matter too long by providing the accurate and right information. Uh, we welcome debate, campaign, whatever, but let's do it based on the uh, proper information. I believe what we have given the accurate information that we should base our discussion, our debate, our lobby on the fact that we have laid before everyone and I believe will be reported uh, for the consumption of those interested in this issue so that we can take the debate into the next level without having to guess about all these basic facts uh, that we have laid before you. The council will have to do a lot of uh, answering if there is an exception, uh, why you do an exception. But they follow the Tata Susun, they impose and subjected to appeal. They can appeal and I already in our previous meeting make the necessary advice 
surrender, apply to use the land until it is needed. That is a, a way out. Lah, no? Maybe in 50 years, in 100 years, I don't know, maybe it's still not needed no? until then. That is not for us to decide at the moment. No? The principle is, uh, not only uh, Chinese girls school is imposed this condition, all development, in fact, the Tata Susun Jalan covers the whole city. No? So the council has to impose, but the council will not stop any party from making an appeal. Highway will be six lane, and uh, the corridor has to accommodate uh, the six lane. So inevitably, uh, as you fine tune the alignment, some some property on the left will be affected, some will be on the right, no? depending on how the highway is maneuvering down. No? No, we are not building something straight, and we cannot build straight highway according to engineering. The straight uh, stress can be up to certain meter and then you've got to do a little bend. So subjected to the topography survey and the final design, it could affect on the left, it could be affecting on the right, it could be affecting only the <coughs> little bit of land, not up to the house, was, unless you do an illegal extension right up to the gate. Lah, huh? if, if it is, you have the building line, I think most of the Acquisition needed doesn't involve <coughs> houses, <lah. coughs> except I think there, there will be a, a, a few. Yeah, there, will be a few. there will be a few. Inevitably, a project of such land, you know, 20 over meter, and we also have to deal with the LRT also. LRT also involved. But LRT, I believe there will be less because the corridor, that's why we choose. <coughs> the consortium has to choose an alignment that necessity or to bring about the least social impact uh, social impact why like institution uh, why do you do the elevated type? double tackle no it is it's elevated it's elevated it's not on grid at the moment the road you have today will still be there the elevator will be built on top but it's elevated six lanes six uh, lanes up there it's not, it's, not, it's not like the no 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 it's not double tackle no, no, we uh, verify then so it's, it's over, it's, it's abreast. So what, whatever is in under the, the, the like Bayang uh, Baru, bottom there are still two roads you can use. No? It's, it's so high up there. Maybe the, what you call the, the end of the highway uh, may, on the line may eat into your, your land or the service road. But actually, it's because it's 30 meter high, right? <coughs> bottom is still possible, la, no issue. La. Still possible. But of course, the alignment, we will maintain the same number of lanes at the moment, huh? at grid level. Same number of lanes will be uh, made available. La. SRS made their recommendation, they only yesterday they bring in the final alignment. We have to give them some time to look at A. After that, we have to present the EXCO. Together with all, not, not only this particular case, the whole alignment has to be approved. So at least SRS said they don't need it. I don't know whether it's MPP or so what we need it. <coughs> the SRS uh, ex, uh, engineer said they don't need it. <coughs> But we, we can expect the, the service growth along all the tuition centers. I must say that there will be portions that have to be realigned, realigned in such a way that whatever is now is still made available, subjected to uh, uh, some acquisition, most likely. But when we turn when the, I mean, the imposition of that, that kind of requirement, because, I mean, will, will approve your plan, but you give us some land, 
it is in the. I mean, yeah, I mean, so so if we don't give you any like. No, as I say, the, the, the options before the council can be two. One is to wait until fifty years for everyone to develop and to surrender. If not, go and acquire and build the road widening. But the, I think the council did not make that decision. Uh, they, they chose the first option to wait forever until everybody surrender. Mm -hmm. There can be two options that are not necessary to yeah, wait, 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 we can acquire and become a power. And some prefer it to be acquired because they can be compensated. Off the record, the Indian Association prefer it to be acquired rather than they having to surrender. They accepted the fact that a road is needed. Once they are putting out a new building, the condition is imposed. They appeal, don't let us surrender, but rather acquire it so that we can get a few million to support our building project. So there will be negotiation and uh, appeal going on now? They have to comply before the issuance of CCC. They will have to deal with it before CCC can be approved. But the money is people's money. Right? Okay, yeah. Red, red payers' money. Not, not Adnan's money or Pattaya's money. It is from the red payer. Acquisition is by market price. Determined by land value. Uh, determined by the state uh, evaluation department. Of course, if you look at the his historical background, because of the sacrifice made by other landowners in, in the few cases that we see here, uh, we saw this now, we have what we have today uh, because of their sacrifice, whether through surrendering or through acquisition, that the roads will make wider. To cope with the, to cope with the organic growth of uh, uh, Georgetown, no, if Francis Light don't come, if I don't come to Penang, and a lot of other people don't come in to add into the population, uh, maybe you still can have the the road to cater to the Bula Kat system, uh, very narrow like Lamuayi, like Su Hong Lane. That were the days when Georgetown became a town uh, no, to cater to the needs at that time. But today's need is entirely very different from the needs of the past. This flyover will end at the public road junction. This flyover will go straight up to the sea to join with the ENO, ENO the expressway. Uh, no, it starts at the pocket road. Oh, it starts all the way from Bangla Pass. <laughs> it will go above the Indian temple where you bless your new car. Above. <laughs> <laughs> the principle is acquisition will be awarded as far as possible. If an alternative like toll assistance, because your building. 30 meter above, there's no point, no no reason why they cannot call exist. Right. No? After maybe during the building, you be expected they have to shift a bit. When it's completed, they can, uh, the, the consortium is working on this principle. Uh, if possible call exist. Since it is uh, the height of the uh, wall duct is only 30 meters, it could be about 30 meters. So whatever below, even the roads can still continue to be road. The service road can be continued to the service road. You will pass across Even if your gate uh, during construction, maybe you are needed to ship back. If it's not acquired, we don't pay you, but after finish, you put back your gate there. Uh. Things like that, uh, so that to avoid having the need to acquire, uh, to compensate. Once you acquire and compensate, the land belongs to the state. Uh, uh. So this is still being worked, uh, it's still too early. There will be a lot of work to be done, every lot, every lot, there will be negotiation by the consortium with every lot owners. How much is needed or not needed, whether can call exist or not. Until where? Across the temple, across youth park? Across youth park, as the consortium has said, they will not be putting pillars in the youth park, they will be building a very, very oh, one wide span, so that the pillars is outside youth park. As far as possible, it's 200 meters, I think. Yes. So nothing will be punched into the, the field. Uh, 
have is the design that they will be op opting now. Then go up to the hill, and then go to Pal Subong, Relau, to join with Sungai Chiram. How long? Right? About 20 kilometers. 20 kilometers. So in like this case, we also, as Baby Yap Suhui said, this is the first case that those involved in the transport master plan has to be aware. You will face 1,000 and one more cases like that. People will be appealing, people will be objecting, and all this has to be negotiated to a, to a settlement. But definitely not, not going to 1,000 cases uh, in draft. Draft is a uh, few hundred. Uh, land or first land without building, they are 100 over probably houses. Houses means maybe you don't need to demolish. It's in the front yard, lah. No front yard. To make way for construction. <coughs> Not the house, lah. The, 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 the driveway. Or maybe your parking area will be smaller. And that is also above the line. We cannot say it's above. After that, you still can use. On record, on paper, maybe the land has to be acquired. But after the completion, you still can. Uh, right, let me use back. My gate is here, now you bring me move here. Can I put back my gate here or not? That can be discussed when the project is ready. So, just now, the, the figure you have given us is for acquisition or those affected, the work you should use? Uh, it should be acquisition because it's nothing to do with this Tata uh, Susun uh, Jalan. It's not a development. It is acquisition to build a highway. So, this is for PIL alone. PIL alone. PIL alone. Yeah, so yeah. for the overall project, can we know our when can we This was we are prioritizing two projects. Uh, the LRT, I, saw, I think less houses will be affected. Less, much less. It, it be because uh, yeah, because the width is not so uh, go up the train. The width is narrower compared to the highway. So you don't actually you are using the road cor corridor mainly uh, putting your piers in the middle of the road, the median, and go out. So uh, the, the, the reserve is big enough, lah. so you don't hit you know, people's house and land that, that many. Uh. You're talking about my island bus, uh, uh, the LRT. Uh. Uh, so for the whole big case, right? They should appreciate that the council did not impose that because it's a minor uh, alteration in the unkechit, you know? If they can impose, then you, you can even jump higher. The council did not want to impose that. It's because of small scale, it doesn't add on new space into the, the land. It's just maybe modifying some buildings, so not impose. Maybe the board directors still hoping that the state government can come up with the win-win solutions, but as YB explained just now, there's no way. If they, well, they can, to they can tell us what is the win-win solution. Maybe but first, if they have taken this stand, uh, <coughs> they have taken not an inch. If they have taken the stand, it is, it is I don't see win-win. Uh, it's win-win for them, but not win for us. It is a win-lose, maybe. So they have to also understand the I hope that these facts will also help them to analyze and come, come to a position. This is not a win-win stand. Not even an inch. So it's not a win-win stand, a so-called win-win stand. I hope that the discussion after this can be okay, based on these basic facts so that people can debate the issue more intelligently sort of understand the issue. Wagon Jamal also right after the need right.